Mark, managing Purple Martin and a Purple Martin house is quite a big commitment, is it not? It, it really is. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people that have Purple Martin houses call themselves Purple Martin landlords because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, of effort and maintenance that goes into a Martin house. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a friend of mine has told me that uh, a Martin house is a lot like having a garden, mm -hmm. that you have a lot of maintenance involved in it. It's not just a matter of putting up a box and walking away for the season. You really need to, to check the box, mm -hmm. uh, make, make provisions for predators, keep uh, competing birds like house sparrows and starlings out of the box, uh, and just check on the welfare of your birds in general. Now early in the season we have to check pretty regularly uh, for those sparrow nests and starlings. How often do you check a box? Well we usually recommend between every five to ten days or roughly okay. once a week mm -hmm. uh, through uh, March, April, uh, and May. Uh, mm -hmm. By the time they are well into nesting, you don't have to check it as frequently, at least not for sparrows and starlings. Okay. Now, this is where the advantage of that telescoping pole or a winch and pulley system come in. So we've already lowered this down to a reachable height. Yes. And um, go ahead and walk us through how you okay. do your weekly checks. Well, what I do, it, it's, it's very simple. Uh, we, we, we do a check. We try to do it in a fairly short period of time. I don't like to have a house down for more than about 10 minutes mm -hmm. because it, it puts stress on the adult birds that are watching us uh, as well as the birds that are in the box, the chicks that are in the box. Uh, also, I don't like to do it when uh, the temperatures are very warm. I typically do mine in the morning. Okay. I don't want it to be too cold and I don't want it to be too hot. So mm -hmm. usually it's between 9 o'clock and say 11 o'clock uh, in the morning. And I don't like to check the boxes if there are predators around, obvious predators. If right. there was a hawk in the area, I wouldn't check the box. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But here we have good weather conditions. We have the box down for a couple of minutes. And I go through and open up the compartments. This particular box style here, you can open up uh, the front of three compartments at a time. So we'll open this up and see if there are any, any nests. And we can see that purple martins have started to bring in some material here. Uh, and we have a house sparrow nesting mm -hmm. here. What we'll do, uh, I like to, to remove any house sparrow or starling nests. These are, both of those mm -hmm. are species that are not native to the United States and they are competitors with our purple martins and will run off purple martins, sometimes even killing purple martins to get their uh, boxes. A purple martin nest is a pretty simple nest. It's usually a flat platform with some mud in it. it always has some degree of mud some sticks and usually either some leaves or grass okay. in it a sparrow nest on the other hand is usually a ball um, like you see here it's a ball of grass they'll sometimes incorporate bits of paper candy wrappers mm -hmm. bird feathers you know, people that have chickens will often have chicken feathers yeah. stuck in their house sparrow nests mm -hmm. uh, and it's a pretty simple thing to remove. And I, I don't get too worried about disease. There aren't a lot of diseases that, we're, that people can get from birds. Mm -hmm. And this nest is only maybe a week old, maybe 10 days old. So it's not, and not very old. It's good to check it regularly because you've caught it before there's eggs yes. in the nest. Um, but if there are eggs, that's something that you need to remove as well, um, or baby birds, because they're gonna be competing with our purple martins. You're now, exactly right. uh, sparrows and um, European starlings. Starlings, they're mm -hmm. not native species, so they're not protected. And it's okay to go ahead and destroy those uh, to remove them from the nest. That's mm -hmm. right, it is. The, the, the nests and the eggs you can, you can remove and destroy. Now, if there were a native bird nest, if there was, a, say, a bluebird that nested in mm -hmm. here or a house finch, I wouldn't take it out. I would leave it there because those native birds are protected and, and they're beneficial as well. Uh, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to get other native birds in a purple martin house, but it, it does happen occasionally. So once the um, nest is removed, we just put our house back up? Yep, we'll put our house back mm -hmm. up. We don't have any, we've already checked here and there, there are no nests going on up here mm -hmm. yet. We're still a little bit early in the season. So yeah, now that we've removed the house sparrow nest, we can put the, uh, the box back up. Okay. Now usually we will have had plugs in here until the first martins arrive, but the first martins have been back now for about three weeks, so the plugs have come out. And this is kind of that critical time of year where we really have to stay on top of house sparrows because the martins haven't started nesting, 
but the box is open and house sparrows can move in. Once we have several pairs of martins in a box, mm -hmm. uh, the martins are pretty effective at running off house sparrows right. themselves. Yeah. But before they get nest started in nesting or when a colony is young and you only have two or three pairs, sure. mm -hmm. you, you really have to kind of take the you kind of have to help the martins out by okay. removing the competitors. So we'll be extra vigilant this yes, time of year. Yes. One thing I like about this particular pole here is they have a triangular shaped pole that uh, is, is sort of locked in one position. When you have a round pole, uh, we've talked about before, it's important to mark the location mm -hmm. or the orientation of your box on the pole because if you, if that box were to move a few inches one way or another in your nest check, it can disorient the birds. They will enter an adjacent nest cavity instead of their own, and, and that can have bad consequences. So it's important that, that the box go up the same way, the same orientation that it came down. Okay, well thank you, Mark. Well, thank you.